We're now going to start chapter 4, lesson 3, multiplication with decimals and whole numbers. In this lesson, it's going to focus more on the actual algorithm as opposed to the conceptual understanding. So we're not going to be drawing pictures for this one. That being said, I am going to be focusing on four specific problems that really utilize the 4 and the 5 cheat sheet. If you want, create one of these or use your old one from before. There is um, a YouTube video out called multiplication using touch math and go ahead and um, review that before starting this lesson if you need to. That being said, we're going to look at number one, but we're not going to look at the answer quite yet. I'm going to rewrite it. Five and two tenths times four. And as we do this problem, we're going to ignore the decimal completely. So we're going to multiply this as if it was 52 times four. And if you remember how we did that, we would start with the 4, and we'd multiply it by the 2. <clears throat> 4 times 2 is 8, and so the 8 goes down here. I don't know why mine keeps unfocusing. Then we'll do 4 times the 5. 4 times 5 is 20. And since there's no other number over here, the 20 is just going to go down. So, you see that 52 times 4 is 208. Now we're going to worry about the decimal at this point. So we're going to multiply everything as we would normally and just worry about the decimal at the end. Now we're going to look at the first top number and we're going to see is there a decimal? Yes. And how many place values is that decimal starting from the right side? There's only one. So that's one place value. And the second one, does it have a, place, uh, does it have a decimal? No. We're going to count how many times we moved it. One time for the top one, zero times for here, so the total is one movement. And we're going to move it one place value. So starting from the behind the eight to in front of it. And our final answer is 20.8, which is 20 and 8 tenths. And if we look at that logically, you think 5 and 2 tenths rounds out to 5. And 4 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So if you looked at the original number, 208, the estimate, 5 and 2 tenths, which rounds to 5, and 4 is 4, 5 times 4 is 20, 208 is nowhere near 20. So 20 and 8 tenths looks more of a valid answer. So we're going to be doing this two ways. One way, we're going to just multi uh, multiply it out and then move the decimal at the end. And the second way we're going to do it is also estimate. 5 and 2 tenths rounds down to 5. The 4 stays the same. 5 times 4 is 20. When you look at 208, that's not next to 20. However, 20 and 8 tenths is. Um, I'm going to do a couple more, but before I do, I'm going to switch the camera the other way because I think that's why it keeps getting out of focus. Okay, I'm going to skip now to number 3 um, for two reasons. One, you'll see that there is the place value slightly different as opposed to the first and second one as well as I'm using the numbers 4 and 5 for these examples. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply this as if it was 1,302 times 5. We're going to pretend there's no decimal there whatsoever. And so we're going to start by doing 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And so we're going to put the 0 down here. And we're going to regroup the 1. Yes, the camera doesn't, um, doesn't mess up as much. Now... So 5 times 2 is 10. We put the we regroup the 1, we put the 0 down. Now we're going to do 5 times 0. Anything times 0, 5 times 0 is 0. Plus the 1 that we regrouped. 5 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Then we're going to do 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. So 5 times 3 is 15. There's nothing to add at the end. The 5 is going to go down here. We're going to regroup the 1 for 15. And last but not least, we're going to do 5 times 1. Anything times 1 is itself. 5 times 1 is 5, plus the number that we regrouped. So 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So the answer is not totally 6,510. We have to worry about the decimals now. Looking here, is the decimal is there a decimal in the first one? Yes. 
How many times do you have to move it from the end to get there? Well, you have to move it one time before the two and a second time before the zero. So we had to move it a total of two times. Down here, are there any decimals? No, so we didn't move it at all. Altogether, how many times did we have to move the place value two times? One, two, before the zero, before the one, and the number is 65 and 10 hundredths, or 65 and 1 tenth. These are the same number because in the tenths place is still a one, and there's nothing in the hundredths. Keep in mind, I want you to also round it and estimate. So 13 and 2 hundredths is close to the number 13. And then we'll keep 5 as it is. So 13 and 2 hundredths, it's like saying $13.02 is close to $13 instead of $14. And then 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Remove the 1. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 65. And you could see 65 is close to 65 and 10 hundredths, 65 and 1 tenth. It is not close to 6,510. It's not close to 651. Um, so that's the second way to do it. Just to estimate the answer, as you can see, you won't be getting the same exact answer. It's just an estimate. And you want the ones and the tens to be somewhat next to each other. For seven through 14, you're gonna have to rewrite it going up and down. And so I don't want you to try multiplying it left and right. The one with more digits will go on top. So here there's only one digit, the four. Here there's two dig th digits, the nine and the three. So we're gonna put the one with two digits on top. It's a decimal. And we're gonna start by multiplying. Four by the three. Four times three is 12. The two goes down. The one gets regrouped. That's four times three is 12. Then we're gonna do four times nine. Four times nine is 36. So four times nine is 36 plus one is 37. Now your final answer is not 372. Now you have to worry about the decimal. Is there a decimal in the first place? Yes. How many times do you have to move it from the end to get there? One time, just once before the three. Is there a decimal here? None at all, so no movement. Altogether, we moved it a total of one time. So our final answer is 37 and 2 tenths. Keep in mind, we're also going to round it. 9 and 3 tenths is closer to 9. 4, 9 times 4 is 36. And you could see 36 is close to 37 and 2 tenths. It would not have been close to 372, and it's definitely not close to 3 and 72 hundredths. 36 and 37 are near each other. Um, I was going to do number 9, but I think you're kind of getting the gist of it. The most important thing is just multiply it normally. Count how many times you're moving that decimal, move it to that right place value, and then also estimate the numbers. Now, I know I'm making the estimate sound pretty natural and easy to do, but it's something that we will be practicing. Just always keep in mind where the ones, the tens, and the hundreds are. Where that decimal is, ones, tens, hundreds. Practice saying numbers over and over so that you really get a good solid sense of um, number sense. I'll help you with 15 and 16 just to get you started, although as always I won't solve it for you. A half dollar coin, which is a coin that's worth 50 cents. Issued by the United States Mint measures 30 and 61 hundredths millimeters across. So like let's say that we have a coin right here. Um, let me just draw a coin out, a circle. They measured it going from here to here, which is the diameter, and they said it's 30 and 61 hundredths millimeters. Mike has nine half dollars. He lines them up to end in a row. So here's one, then he has another one, three, four, and he has nine of those. What is the total length of row of the half dollars? Well, one is 30 and 61 hundredths, the next is 30 and 61 hundredths, the next is 30, 30 and 61 hundredths. So if I were to draw a picture of this out, here is one coin, one half dollar. Here's the second half dollar. And he's going to have nine half dollars altogether. 
And when he laid them all out, each of them wore, each of them had a measurement of 30, 30 and 60 one hundredths millimeters. 30 and 60 one hundredths, 30 and 60 one hundredths. You want to find the total length of nine coins, nine half dollars. And so what you could do is 30.61 plus 30.61 plus 30.61 over and over until you did that nine times. Or this is repeated addition is multiplication. So you could do 30 and 61 hundredths times nine. I do want you to solve it both ways, both where you just find the place value and another one where you estimate and make sure that the estimate makes sense. So don't forget to draw the picture box out. Make sure you understand um, where the picture box is coming from and how each of these are half dollars. There's nine of them lined up and each of them have the same length. Adding them all up or multiplying. Last but not least, one pound of grape costs $3.49. Linda buys exactly three pounds of grapes. How much will the grapes cost? So here you have one pound of grapes. You have a second pound of grapes. You have a third pound of grapes. Each pound costs $3.49. So this first pound costs $3.49 to buy. The second pound costs the same amount, $3.49. The last pound costs $3.49. This X is the total cost of three pounds. And here you can already see the equation, three, $3.49 plus $3.49 plus $3.49 or $3.49 times three. And I do want you solving it both ways. One where you simply move the decimal place and the other one where you think logically about what makes most sense. When you estimate them and you find that answer, 65 is close to 65 in 10 hundredths. This is where the, the decimal go. Here, 20 is close to 20 and 8 tenths. So you're using the estimate to find where the place value is going to end up. Where will that decimal go? If your answer has to be close to 36, if you put the decimal here, it'd make it 372. That's not close to 36. If you put it here, it's 37 and 2 tenths. That's close to 36. If you put it here, it's 372. That's not close to 36. So when I'm saying the estimate, I know some of you guys might get a little confused if you don't really understand place value, just think, if the answer has to be near 65, where would the decimal go? If the decimal went here, it would only be 6. If it went here, 65, that's close. Here, 651, too much. Over here, 6,510, too much. So just really think about place value. Um, I hope that these answer your questions. This is one of the shorter videos because it is something that will take practice um, you know here when you round it and the answer is close to 20 if you put a decimal here the answer will only be two that's not close if you put the answer here 28 tenths that's close if you put the decimal here 208 that's too high um, so this one's definitely a very straightforward procedure I think a lot of you guys are going to get the first step this is going to be pretty easy for you guys but in terms of the estimating we're going to practice that more so in class than I can really answer so much in a video. So hopefully this helped um, and a lot of it is just number sense. All right.